On September 22, 1950, three employees from Nihon University, often shortened to Nichidai, a private university in Tokyo, got in a private car with just shy of 2 million yen in staff wages that they were about to transport to the university from the bank. On the way there, they were suddenly pulled over, attacked with a knife, and the money stolen. If this sounds familiar, then you may be thinking of another similar incident that took place almost two decades later, the 300 million yen robbery. While that robbery involved a lot more money and the culprit ultimately got away and was never caught, that wasn't the case here. And only two days later, 19-year-old Yamagiwa Hiroyuki and his 18-year-old girlfriend, Fujimoto Sabumi, were arrested. As he was being arrested, Yamagiwa turned to his girlfriend and screamed, in English, Oh! Mistake! Which led to the media also dubbing this the Oh Mistake incident. But what really went down that day and why did they steal the money? Let's take a look. Yamagiwa was a driver for the same university whose wages he stole. His girlfriend Fujimoto was also the daughter of a professor who worked there. At around 2pm on September 22nd, the day of the incident, a member of the university's accounting department, a janitor, and a driver retrieved 1.9 million yen in cash from a bank in Chiyoda Ward, and then got into a Nissan Datsun to deliver the wages for roughly 100 staff members waiting for it. On the way, a young man yelled, Hey, stop! in English, and forced the car to pull over. That young man was, of course, Yamagiwa, and he was the driver's colleague, also working as a driver for the university. What do you want? The driver casually asked him, unaware of what was about to happen. Yamagiwa didn't answer him, but rather attacked him with a jackknife, got in the car, and forced the driver to take him to the Ministry of Labor in Oltemachi. Once there, he forced the three men out of the car and then took off with the bags full of money still inside. Yamagiwa then abandoned the car and made his way towards Tokyo Station. He then grabbed a taxi, went to Shinagawa Station, and then got on the train to Yurakucho. There, he watched a movie and did a bit of clothes shopping to kill time whilst waiting for his girlfriend. At 7pm, he went to a cafe in front of the station where he then met Fujimoto. From there, the couple went to Meguro and spent the night in a Japanese inn. Thanks to Yamagiwa's efforts, the pair had just come into an incredibly large sum of money and they were young, free and ready to live it up. Or so they thought. Yamagiwa didn't exactly hide his face when he robbed his colleague, and so when the pair woke up the next morning, they found photos of themselves splashed all across the morning newspapers. After being attacked, the three men from the university called police, who rushed to the scene to find the men covered in blood. It's safe to say that Yamagiwa didn't plan the robbery or their getaway very well, so the pair decided that they should, for the moment, split up to make it harder to find them. Fujimoto visited some company lodgings in Shinagawa and told them that she was a second generation Japanese person from America and wished to rent a room. Then, that same night, she picked up Yamagiwa and brought him back. They spoke in English and claimed to work for the CIE, the Civilian Intelligence and Education Bureau of GHQ that the US had set up after the war. And because they had just arrived in Tokyo from Osaka, they were terribly exhausted and wished to go to bed right away. By this point, it was almost midnight. Again, the pair didn't think matters through very well, and as they drank beer the following morning for breakfast, the wife of another employee in a different room noticed the jovial couple and thought they shared a frightening similarity to the couple police were looking for in the Nichidai robbery case. As such, she called the police and alerted them to the couple's presence at the dorms. Police arrived at 5pm that same day and promptly arrested the couple, at which point Yamagiwa held both hands up and uttered the now infamous phrase, Oh! Mistake! Still pretending to be a second generation Japanese American. Fujimoto also attempted to keep up the ruse, 
telling the police in Japanese that Yamagiwa was an American who didn't speak their language, as Yamagiwa continued ranting in broken English. Police didn't believe her, or didn't care, and both were taken into custody, ending their brief 48-hour stint on the run, in which they only spent 300,000 of the nearly 2 million yen they had stolen. Photos of Yamagiwa and Fujimoto after their arrest showed a fashionable, good-looking young couple who wouldn't look out of place hanging out with the rich and elite. It's believed the fancy clothes they were wearing were, of course, bought with the money Yamagiwa had stolen, and the entire reason he stole that money was because of how poor he was. Yamagiwa, who was very much Japanese and had never so much as even stepped foot in America, was born the son of a factory owner in Kanda, Tokyo. His father's factory was burnt down during the war and so the family fell on hard times. Despite this, Yamagiwa refused to work and simply lazed about at home all day, infuriating his father. It wasn't until October 1949, just shy of a year before the robbery, that he got his first job. But despite his handsome baby face, Yamagiwa was a rough youth, often getting into fights, and he even had a tattoo on his arm that said, George. His fascination with American culture was strong, and he wanted to live a life just like that. Fujimoto, on the other hand, was the daughter of a Nichidai professor, and was raised in an intellectual environment. She was, by the standards of the time, a smart, intelligent, and somewhat dry, modern girl. Fujimoto moved to Tokyo with her father in May 1950, when he took a job at the university, but she quickly grew to despise living with him, and reportedly later said, I hated seeing my father all day long. Around June that same year, she started work as a fashion model for a cosmetics company, which she hoped would allow her independence and a chance to move away from her father. But while she still lived with her father on the university grounds, she met Yamagiwa, a driver for the school, when she went to check their mail each morning. Yamagiwa fell for her instantly and soon confessed his feelings. Fujimoto felt the same, so they started dating. He wasn't her first boyfriend, but Fujimoto was especially attracted to Yamagiwa's roughness and bad boy nature. Yamagiwa, on the other hand, claimed that he was attracted to her innocence. Once Fujimoto's father learnt of the relationship, he blew his top and insisted that they break up. The couple decided that they would run away together instead, but to do that, they would need money. As such, Yamagiwa came up with a plan, if you could call it that. As a driver, he knew when the university wages would be coming in, and so he decided to steal them. Simple as that. He would steal the money, and all Fujimoto had to do was show up at the cafe at the designated time. Then they'd elope and live happily ever after. As we know, that didn't work out, and the pair were arrested only two days later. On February 23rd, 1951, Yamagiwa received an indeterminate sentence of four to seven years prison, while Fujimoto received a two-year sentence for aiding and abetting, suspended for three years. Fujimoto's father quit his job and moved back to his mother's family home in Nara Prefecture, taking his daughter with him. Traumatized by everything that had happened, Fujimoto then joined Tenrikyo, a sect of Shinto, she and Yamagiwa lost contact, and she eventually married another Tendikyo follower. Yamagiwa, meanwhile, was released after only three years and three months of his sentence for being a model prisoner. While he was in prison, Fujimoto had reportedly said she would wait for him, but when she didn't show up to his release, he realised the relationship was over. He continued work as a driver, and even taught English as a private tutor for a while, then eventually became a hairdresser and ran his own salon in Tokyo. When asked about his utterance of, oh, mistake, later in life, he claimed that 
He never actually said that, and it was something the media made up. Either way, oh mistake became a bit of a buzzword in Japan after the incident, and many pointed to the crime as yet another example of the rising crime rate amongst youths in post-war Japan that had to be addressed. Both Yamagiwa and Fujimoto went on to lead quiet lives after that, and the money was, presumably, returned to the university staff to get paid. But what do you guys think of this one? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.